Hey everyone, it is Shannon and I am here today to talk about Jaws 2. I am continuing the adventure of watching the Jaws films. Um, I recently watched them all um, because they were on Netflix and I noticed that little thing in the corner that says only available until. So I did a week of Jaws watching and uh, I already shared my thoughts of the original Jaws and now it is time to talk Jaws 2 more shark goodness. Um, so this one was from 1978, so it's three years after the original Jaws. It is directed by Jeno Shawork, not quite sure how to pronounce that name, um, who also directed Somewhere in Time, which is a huge film blind spot for me. That is the one with Christopher Reeves, and it's a time travel romance. How, how have I not seen it? Like, seriously. Anyway, so Jaws 2, back to Jaws 2. Um, the cast for this, uh, we have some reprisals here. Roy Scheider and Lorraine Gray come back as the Brodies. We also have Murray Hamilton and Joseph um, Mascolo. Um, and uh, we also, of course, you know, again, classify this as a horror film or a drama film and or a thriller film. Um, my rating for this one was... 6 out of 10, or 3 out of 5, and sadly, no heart. This one did not get a heart. I was really, I gotta say, I was disappointed in Jaws 2. I don't remember the last time I had seen Jaws 2, probably on VHS rental at some point, or, you know, late night watching on TBS, which probably isn't even a channel anymore. <laughs> it became WGN and then it became nothing. Does it? Other people remember TBS? I used to always watch movies on TBS. Um, so yeah, so this one is, ah, wow. I And I actually watched this in two parts. I started watching and I watched the first sort of 20 minutes of it. Um, a stronger focus, this one has a stronger focus on the kids, uh, in particular Michael, I believe, because um, the Brodies have two sons. And one of them is, uh, I, don't, I don't even remember how old he is, probably like 16 to 18. Um, so it's sort of like a summer fun, him and his friends, everyone wants to go all out on the water, and there's a big, I think a competition to go sailing or some kind of boat type something race or just summer fun I'm not sure there's a particular place that they they want to get to um and um so yeah so I started watching it and I kind of was like uh oh is this going to be more like a like a teen scream like you know um scary plus lots of nudity kind of thing and it didn't end up being that um but it was enough for me to watch a little bit and then to leave it but then I decided to come back and finish things off thankfully it didn't sort of go that route I'm not a fan of that like the sl slashers are sort of my least favorite um horror genre because a lot of them just seem to be like how violent and how much nudity can we pack in and and and, and then like you know evil human so, but in this case, they didn't quite go that route, and it was a shark, so it was much better, much better. <laughs> um, anyway, um, so, yeah, but this one, I gotta say, wow, like, I was happy it didn't go that route, but I was not happy the route it went, which was very, very boring. I found it very boring. Um, like, there were some cool things in this, like, um, the, uh, Lorraine Gray's character, she is involved in, like, the, I'm not sure exactly what it is, like, there's sort of, like, either a revival or or like a summer fun, you know, like, in, like, like, um, town stuff, and, um, they're trying to build up the town, and, and, or the island, and so she's involved in that, and sort of the politician, and, and mayor type stuff, um, and, um, but, you know, then there is something that looks like it could be, is it, isn't it a shark attack, and so, you know, um, or Scheider's character wants to be very cautious. He, you know, it's he's the sheriff, you know, still. And, um, you know, but she is very pro, like, positive, like, let's get the town, you know, going really well. And so the, there's a bit of the yes-no conflict between them that is, gets, I thought was very stalemate-y. And also between him and, you know, the bureaucracy, you know, folk, you know, we got to take care of this. And they're like, no, he's being, like, off his rocker, you know, he's you know, and, but of course, it actually is a shark, so, hey. So, but the challenge is, well, like, there, there is many, many challenges with this one for me. One, that sort of, like, believe, don't believe, and then, like, no progression on either side, I find is, like, a big, like, 
it's just not good not to and this happens in 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 books too like especially romance novels there's one argument and it's just like yes no yes no i want to do this i don't want you to do this i want to do this i don't want you to do this <laughs> no progression and so it just it creates a very flat story um and then the sort of believe don't believe kind of thing is is you know the th the what's going on here um and i didn't find the sort of like stuff with like michael and his friends all that engaging he like um ends up uh you know eventually it, it takes them a long time to actually figure out it is a shark um and then there's water skiing there wasn't that much water skiing but there is some water skiing um and there's lots of like sailboat there i can't they, i don't know what they're called like like wind sail like very not a lot of structure to them therefore you know really like scary moments um uh, you know to be on the water just that and then there's the shark kind of idea but this one i didn't have any sense of and the first one didn't have this either so it's a bit of an odd criticism but there's no sense of why the shark was there like the first one was like this is an anomaly we don't believe it because the sharks don't come here uh, but there is one and you believe it because you see it this one is like why would another shark come here you know, they have the shark telegram service or something. Like, I just, it, it just, it, it fell a bit flat. And that's just continuously what I felt about this film is it just felt a bit flat. Um, but eventually we get Michael and his friends um, deciding to, I think it's Michael, um, the older brother and his friends deciding to, um, they want to go on, you know, go, go out on the water. Um, and he brings his little brother because you got to have even more attention <laughs> with someone younger. Um, and, uh, and, uh, yeah. And so they go out on the water and they slip out in the middle of the night and, you know, and then of course it's revealed. It actually really is a shark. And then Rich Rider is like, oh my gosh, where, where, where's my family? What's going on? And he goes after them. And I think, his wife does too. I can't quite remember. The movies are starting to blend a little bit. They're starting to blend a little bit. I am not sure about that. So, yeah, but, you know, and then, but I just feel like, unfortunately, I felt like this one just sort of re reprised the first one, and that's not uncommon in horror movies, <clears throat> but I felt like there wasn't, it didn't add, like, you didn't have the experts, you didn't have anyone that was, like, Richard Dreyfuss' character or Robert Shaw's character, you just had Brody, and he was sort of, like, the expert-ish, but nobody believed him, and so, and then he goes after them, and there's lots of time with the shark and the water and, you know, and, and, and horrible situations and, you know, all of this stuff, and then eventually I felt like, like, so, spoilers, <laughs> eventually it felt like it just sort of came almost to the exact same no it wasn't the exact same solution as the first one but it was very similar like it was along the same vein it was in it was like an outside you know circumstance you know it's not going to be actually a human that takes down the shark but you need a little more um and so there's not like aliens or anything like that <laughs> And they did, they did, they did, the foreshadowing with it was actually pretty good, so I'm not going to say what it was. Um, but just generally, I felt like it fell a bit flat. I wasn't that invested in the characters. It was really sad to see the town folk yet again, not believe Brody, um, you know, and like, it's like, you've been here before. Like, this has all happened before, so why, you know, why wouldn't it, it happen again? you know, although there seemed to be no reason for it to happen again. So that's the challenge, I think, with this one, is it just, it took the same, like, the same basic points of the first one, and then, for me, at least, the things that I liked about the first one, which is a lot of stuff on the ship with the three, the three guys on the, you know, hunting the on the shark, you didn't have that. You didn't have any of that. It was just mayhem, and it was either misconstrued or unaware, and then by the time that they knew, there was just sort of, like, one big final showdown, and even that, it felt like it was pretty dry and slow in terms of the build-up to it, and just people scared and, like, stranded-ish, you know, and then finally, you know, comes to a very quick conclusion. So it's just, it, it was not, it was not my favorite. It was not my favorite. Um, and I was surprised. I thought it would be okay, especially because the series does continue for two more movies. Um, I really thought that this one would be an enjoyable sequel, but it was very, very dry. It took it very seriously, um, which isn't bad in, in a horror movie uh, or in any movie. I just felt like that you didn't get much like pay off like I just you know so yeah Jaws 2 not my favorite let me know have you watched it you know have you watched it recently I know I saw this one again when I was a kid at some point but I 
did not remember it and I have not rewatched it for many, many years. So and now, now I might know why. <laughs> so those are my thoughts on Jaws 2. I will be back with another video sharing my thoughts on Jaws 3D. <laughs> See you soon.